and welcome into Carroll University. My name is Griffin Eidemann. I am a traditional admission counselor here, but I was also a former student and alumni of Carroll. Uh, all four years here, I was lucky enough to work here in the admission office and give tours to prospective students. And that that's what we're going to be doing here today. I'm going to be walking you through a tour of our beautiful campus. Uh, founded in 1846. We're the oldest college or university in the state of Wisconsin. We're older than the state of Wisconsin itself. Uh, we are going to be going through a bunch of different buildings. We're going to be going through academic buildings, a couple administrative buildings, the learning commons where our library is, as well as the most important place on campus where you're going to eat all four years that you're going to be here. First building I want to point out to y'all right here, that's Voorhees. Voorhees is our main administrative building on campus. Voorhees is one of the older buildings on campus as well. It used to be a dorm hall for all females, but now we have our president's office in there, our business office is in there, as well as the admission office too. Uh, I like to say the business office, most bittersweet place on campus where you go to pay your campus bill, as well as collect your on-campus paycheck. Admission office, you'll work with us until you're a current student at Carroll, as well as the registrar's office where you'll be able to go to drop classes and sign up for classes every year. We're going to move over this way, and right to my left, your right, this is uh, Main Lawn on campus, Main Lawn, confused with the quad sometimes, my mom still calls it the quad, it's Main Lawn though, because there's not academic buildings on all four sides, there's a lot of events that go on on Main Lawn, uh, things like they put up a big movie screen, you can watch movies out here, they have a little pumpkin patch every October, as well as we have graduation every spring right here on Main Lawn. Hopefully they get a beautiful day like this to have graduation. Building behind me is Main Hall. Main Hall is the oldest building on campus. It was founded a couple years before Carroll was founded, uh, and it actually is burned down about three or four times. Luckily, none in the past 50 years, so you got nothing to worry about. I like to call it the Harry Potter building on campus. It's a beautiful building. It's got wide open ceilings on the inside, tall classrooms. It's a big multi-purpose facility, so you'll have all different kinds of classes in there, whether they're at math, science, communications, any different kind of class can be in there. It's a lot of lecture space, but also smaller class sizes. Uh, and Main Hall is a building that you'll definitely have a class in during your time at Carroll. So this right here is the Todd Weir Memorial Library. Uh, Todd Weir Memorial Library has an on-campus coffee shop, a couple different noise levels that you're allowed to go with. Uh, we're gonna head on inside and see a little bit more of the Todd Weir Memorial Library. People always think I'm joking around when I say that the Todd Weir Memorial Library is the most popular place on campus. I swear it is the most popular place on campus. I spent more time here than I did in my dorm hall. Uh, part of that was studying, but part of that is the social interaction and things you're able to kind of do in the Todd Weir Memorial Library. This right here, Stone Creek Coffee, is our on-campus coffee shop. You're allowed to use your meal plan there. I always like to say that this is a nice and medium noise level for students. You can come in here, they have a bunch of board games. Professors will sometimes hold their office hours in here, as well as sometimes uh, you'll be able to meet tutors in there and things like that. So really nice. I always tell people, give yourself a little bit more than like five minutes before class if you're coming to get a coffee. Uh, maybe give yourself 15 because there is a line out the door sometimes. It's a pretty popular spot on campus. As we move across, we have the reading room, also known as the red noise level area. Um, basically what this means is that you're not allowed to talk, you're not allowed to have any noise level in there, even if you open up like a candy wrapper or something like that, you'll get a couple looks from people. Uh, over off to the left hand side of there, we have some nice individual study areas. Uh, and it's just really nice to kind of have that silent area. If you really gotta get a paper done, if you forget about that paper that's due at midnight, you have a place to kind of come and grind on that paper if you need it. Moving over here, we have the information reference columns. Basically a fancier word for a computer lab where we have a couple of our librarians on campus. Uh, we have computer labs in a bunch of different buildings on campus. Most academic buildings as well as a couple of dorm halls have computer labs. We also have our main printing area uh, over here in the uh, commons. 
printing on campus, every student gets $30 per year. Uh, you're never really going to need more than that. I myself never went over $14 on printing. You get six cents a page and you get front and back for a page. That's all loaded on your Pioneer card. You're able to send to that remotely or you can send it to it from one of our on-campus computer labs here. People always ask, do I need to bring a computer? Do I need to bring a printer? You don't need to bring a printer, at least in my experience. A lot of professors have you turn things in online nowadays, as well as a lot of times uh, you just send stuff in uh, through email, things like that. Uh, computer, on the other hand, I always enjoyed having my own computer on campus just because I was able to do homework on main lawn, do homework in a bunch of weird and wacky spots on campus, so I always brought my own. So down here, this is the Learning Commons, single-handed, most popular spot on campus. These past four years, we've had over 100,000 visits to the Learning Commons. Uh, I was also here the past four years as a student, so I think there might be some correlation in that. Uh, so you see down here, it's a very big, wide open space. Everything in here is on wheels, so you're able to kind of really make it a collaborative area. People joke this is where nursing students take up the entire back half of it because they're all getting in their study tables. Uh, and like I said, this is probably the loudest area of the library, if you even want to put it that way. Everyone is pretty respectful and they keep it to an understandable noise level where you're never going to have it too loud that you can't focus. Not only is this great for collaborative area, uh, but this is also really important for tutoring. Carol has a ton of free tutoring services. Uh, we'll start with some of them right here on the wall. So this is the drop-in tutoring schedule. As you can see, we have a bunch of different areas of study lifted, listed on the top, and then looking down, they have the specific course, they have the specific uh, tutor, as well as what time they're going to be in here. It's really easy to identify the tutor. They'll just have a little sign on their table. You'll be able to walk up to them and ask them any questions. It's their on-campus job, so they're going to do a good job, and they're there for students free for them to use. And really, uh, this is my biggest thing. They're free. Go and use them. There's no reason not to, uh, and they're always going to be down here for you. Students, this could be an on-campus job for you uh, down the line. It's an awesome option because you're still able to kind of work through material, and you're always allowed to do homework if no one's with you. You're always allowed to kind of be working on something, as for most campus jobs on campus. Most campus jobs on campus. <laughs> we also have a oh, good... Yep. We also have a general writing assistant and a general math assistant. These are really general opportunities where it's not going to be super specific. You're able to bring a paper from any class to the writing assistant and they'll kind of help you through that. As well as the math tutor, uh, they're just for most of the basic math courses on campus at Carroll. We also have something else, and I really always like to structure this as tutors on steroids, if you will, uh, supplemental instruction. So supplemental instruction is for our harder classes on campus. Basically, it's all those classes where we kind of notice that students really utilize the tutors. So what we did is we found a student who got about a 94, 95 or higher in the class. We dubbed them the supplemental instructor. It's their on-campus job. They basically sit in on every single class. They meet with the professor and they hold exam and test prep. It's there for you to use. It's free. If you go to at least half of them, so about 10 of the 20 sessions, your grade will increase by half a level. They do an excellent job. I had a roommate who was a physics SI and the students really became friends with him. They really work together. It's a collaborative opportunity for students. Also, one kind of fun fact about the learning commons down here, it's dry erase. All the walls are dry erase. You thought you were done drawing on the walls in kindergarten. No, you still do that here in college. Uh, one last thing, there's even more free resources for you down here. We have tutoring and career service centers down here. Tori Boduch, as well as Lydia Guell, uh, really excellent with the career service center. They're here for students to be able to use them. Uh, internships, just writing a cover letter. They're not just for juniors and seniors going on to find jobs, but they're also for freshmen and sophomores who say, what the heck is a cover letter? How do I write that? Uh, I personally had an internship two different summers that I was up in uh, Wisconsin, uh, and I was able to kind of use the Career Service Center to kind of launch me into those internships. And we're back outside. We took a nice little walk from the learning comments from the library you see back over there in the distance. Now right behind me, you can see the back of Main Hall. So we're just on the other side of Main, and we're gonna start going back over this way. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have Main Lawn over in the front. 
Right behind me, this is the quad. It's the quad because on all four sides, you have academic buildings. Uh, one of the buildings we won't be going into, but I always like to talk about, is Rankin Hall. Rankin is the one straight ahead. Uh, its official title is the Rankin Hall of Science. Uh, people joke it's anything that ends in ology. You'll have a class for that in there. Uh, Rankin uh, was recently renovated. It's a historical landmark of the city of Waukesha, so you're not allowed to touch the outside. You need to pretty much keep the exterior the same. So what we did was we completely tore it down from the inside out and just built a new building on the inside, basically. It's a beautiful building. Still has that new building smell, I like to say. So Rankin Hall most likely will have a class in there, anything that ends in ology, or just general classrooms as well. We have a couple labs in Rankin uh, for lab space as well. We're in the Michael and Mary Jahar Science Laboratories right now, came in from the outside. Uh, people like to call this the ABC building, if you will. Uh, the basement is anatomy and physiology, first floor biology, second floor chemistry. Also, just some beautiful people watching spots on the second floor, if that's what you like to do. Good places to study as well. Uh, this was built basically uh, a couple of years ago. It's one of the newest buildings on campus, but I can't even say that it's the newest building on campus because we do have a newer building on campus, if you will. Finished in uh, 2018, students have been coming here for the past couple of years and being able to utilize these lab spaces that we have in this building. Uh, basement, like I said, anatomy and physiology. You're gonna see a lot more of uh, just anatomy and physiology courses as well as our cadaver lab is down there. First floor, biology. This is where you're gonna have a lot of those bio, biology-based classrooms. Second floor, chemistry. That's where you'll see chemical hoods and things like that in those classrooms. We're gonna take a peek into one of the biology teaching labs. So as you can see from here, uh, it's still a really small class size. That was one of the things that stood out to me as a communication major. I had nothing to do with any biology course during my time at Carroll let alone the rest of my life. Um, but it's still a really small class size. You would think with a new building like this, they'd be like, all right, let's get as many students as we possibly can into there. Now it's still a really small class size, still enough room for your supplemental instructor to come around and help you out with different things, or the lab professor to come over and ask you some questions, make sure that everything's going okay. And that was one thing that stood out to me just as a student, seeing that they still were trying to keep the class sizes nice and small. Now we'll head it back out this way and we'll head to the newer building, if we want to put it that way. So as we cross the threshold, we head into the Doug and Nancy Hosted Hall. Uh, Doug and Nancy Hosted Hall is the newest building on campus, completed in 2019. Uh, Doug and Nancy Hosted, former president and first lady, really the people that took us from Carroll College to Carroll University. Uh, down in the basement, we have exercise science, uh, a little bit of applied physics as well. And up here on the first floor, we have our business area as well as a couple just general classrooms. One thing I always like to, to point out to students is even though you're just a, uh, let's say, a business major, you're never going to be just in one area on campus. You're going to be in all different classrooms with all different other students. That's why we have the general education piece that we do, and that's why we are a liberal arts uh, institution, just that way you, you get to interact with people outside your normal comfort zone. Uh, and so as we're going through this, we can even point out the general business computer lab in here. It's a really awesome space. I think that ticker on the top is so cool uh, just to see what that looks like. They'll put sports scores up there as well as the stock market and computer lab as well in this building. This one, like I said, is a business-based classroom, so they'll do a lot of interactive learning here, online simulators and programs that they'll kind of get to go through. We'll head back out this way. Up on the second floor is our state-of-the-art nursing lab. Uh, I believe we're actually going to be doing a separate video just touring the nursing lab, allowing a nursing student to kind of walk you through what that looks like. So stay tuned for that coming out soon. But I think one thing we're going to do is we're going to head up to the roof for a special little treat. So we've made it after three long flights of stairs. Awesome place for students to come and study, just come and hang out in general. A, a lot of events happen up here. So we'll actually get a full view of what this all looks like. You can see the entire city of Waukesha from up here. One of the really awesome things I want to point 
about is across the street over there, uh, those are the suites. The suites are another op living opportunity on campus, a dorming opportunity. One, two, three, four, and five people, they each get their individual room. They share a little common living space. It's basically like your own apartment. Those things are way too nice for college students. I had no business living in that place for two years. Uh, and those you are allowed to live in as a freshman, but as I love to say, freshmen, do your time live in the traditional dorms, then you'll graduate to the suites eventually. You can also see the track and field area from up here, uh, a really awesome view. We have one of the only weather controlled tracks in the state of Wisconsin. What that means, I didn't even know they had science for that, but basically what that means is when it gets hot, the track does not get hot itself, and when it gets cold, the track doesn't crack due to the cold. So a beautiful uh, facility down there, as well as you see Schneider Stadium where we have men's and women's lacrosse, men's and women's soccer, as well as the Pioneer football team, uh, all compete on that field. It's free to get into any sporting event during your time at Carroll. You don't have to pay for like a Pioneer Pass or anything like that. Uh, and really, you can use any of those facilities as long as there isn't a sports team on them. Uh, so you'll see people out there playing that thing where they have the net and the ball, spike ball. They'll be playing spike ball, throwing the frisbee around. Awesome opportunity for students just be able to use the facilities if no one else is using them. People ask about intramural sports a lot because uh, Carroll is a pretty rigorous academic school. Uh, so a lot of times student athletes want to take that step back. They still want to be able to participate, but they don't want to commit fully to a Division three sport, to an NCAA sport. Right behind us, right over here really, uh, is Ganfield Gymnasium. I always call this kind of the hub of rec sports. It has a awesome uh, basketball court and also uh, facility that's kind of sunken into the ground. You're able to play basketball there. They have an indoor soccer league. Myself, I'm a one-time dodgeball intramural champion. Thank you very much. Uh, and also up on the second floor, we have a dance studio uh, for Zumba, for Rupa, for everything else that involves a dance studio, as well as the Carroll University Blaze dance team practices up there. Uh, and really just an awesome facility. Everybody's getting together playing basketball on Friday nights. People are getting together uh, just to use it. Uh, and it's open to students most, of, most weekdays. Uh, and actually on the weekends, it's open a little bit later than the weekdays, which is nice. I know that I've spent many hours in here on Friday and Saturday nights playing basketball. So. All right, and welcome back. We just took a nice little walk down the hill. Uh, and right behind me as we're walking past here, this is the Van Mail Athletic Complex, really the main athletic hub of everything on campus. This was redone in the summer of 2015 uh, and just designed to really try to make us look more a little bit like a upper level institution that we are. We did change from Carroll College to Carroll University and we have our nice new logo, no longer the Chicago Bears uh, logo for all you Green Bay and Wisconsinites out there. Uh, this is another facility. You can use it as long as there isn't a sports team in it. We have a really awesome weight room in here as well as a very large field house where we have things like Relay for Life and our pep rally, Yell Like Hell. We also have our on-campus swimming pool in here. They call it the Van Mail Natatorium. Learn that that's a fancier word for swimming pool. Uh, and this is also where a lot of our coaches have their offices and things like that. Like I said, this was just recently redone in the summer of 2015 because we do have the new logo and we are Carroll University now, no longer Carroll College. We have some really uh, outstanding facilities in here. Uh, the recovery room for all athletes and even some non-athletes being able to recover from injuries, things like that. And as we move forward through here, we are in the CCIW, the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin, uh, one of the top Division III conferences in the entire nation, uh, arguably the best when it comes to athletics and academics combined. Uh, we do also have athletic training facilities in here, as we, uh, we also have one down by Schneider Stadium, right next to the field for students to use, uh, student athletes to be able to use that. Uh, we have coaches offices and a weight room upstairs, and then, We have Van Mail, the auditorium, the gymnasium, the field house. Uh, it gets rocking in here, let me tell you that. Uh, men's and women's basketballs compete in here, as well as women's volleyball. But 
hey, it's open right now. You could always use it. Come and play basketball with your friends. I know I had no business ever playing on the same court as our basketball team, but I'd still come and do it because why not, right? Uh, and now we're going to go keep on moving through the tour, but that's kind of it for the athletics piece of it. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on dorm halls. We're going to see the campus center as well after this. Just came out of the front side of Van Mail. Now I'm going to point out Odyssey Theater. Odyssey is kind of our main uh, fine arts area on campus. Uh, we do have two different theaters in there. One of them is a black box. One of them is a traditional theater. The Carroll Players is the oldest uh, fine arts theater group in the state of Wisconsin. They put on plays, they put on musicals, a bunch of different opportunities, even if you're not a theater major. We also have a requirement. Every student needs to take a fine arts class during their uh, time at Carroll. That can be done as a theater class, or that can be done as just a ceramics, painting, 2D, 3D drawing, or photography, things like that. I always say save that towards the end, save that for your junior, senior year. That way when you're in a couple 300 level courses, you have a nice easy brain break, as I like to put it. That's Odyssey. It's also connected to the Humphrey Memorial Chapel. Humphreys is our main uh, religious area on campus. We are a Presbyterian University, uh, but you are not required to go to any sort of chapel. You're not required to take a religion course, but the opportunities are available if you want those. Right behind me is the Shattuck Music Center. Also, there is a chapel in this building as well. It's our main performing arts, music, band, uh, choir area on campus. We do have a lecture hall located in there. Uh, all of the music and band area is down in the basement. We have our big practice rooms. We also have individual private practice rooms that are up there on the top level. Uh, in the actual auditorium seats, oh geez, I don't even know, 1,500 people. Uh, we have a lot of large group gatherings in there. Uh, we have Carol's Got Talent as well as our opening convocation where all freshmen kind of get introduced to Carol and what we really are about when you get to be a student here. Uh, we're going to walk across the street and head on over to the traditional dorm hall at Steele and Swarthout on campus. Carol has six different traditional dorm hall offerings. North Bergstrom, South Bergstrom, Steele and Swarthout as well as Charles Street Hall as well as Kilgore Hall. So Steel and Swarthout, like I said, are two of our traditional dorm halls. You share with one roommate, you share with two roommates, you could be in a triple. We do have singles available, but I always say get that traditional freshman experience. Get that experience of picking a roommate or going with a random roommate. You're allowed to choose both. You can choose a roommate ahead of time, or you can go with a random roommate as well. recently updated uh, the Little Common Living Space for students to use, doing whatever they want to do, homework, social gatherings, things like that. So this is a traditional dorm hall at Carroll. You get everything you see here that's wooden. So you get the desk, you get a little cabinet, uh, you get the dresser as well as you get the bed. You are able to loft the bed, you're able to bunk the beds, you're able to put them in that little L shape. I always say don't do that by yourself, wait for a roommate or some friends to be there for you. But on the day of moving, RAs, uh, residence assistants, as well as community coordinators and area directors will be walking around to try to help you set up your room however you want to do it. They'll teach you how to use the free stacking system that we give away. It's a couple little pegs that's not too hard to understand. Like I said, you're able to kind of pick however you want to do your room. It's up to you. You're allowed to have mini fridges, things like that, but just no open coils as well as no microwave. Too many cases of burnt popcorn, all that good stuff. Uh, but we do have a floor microwave for everyone to use on each individual floor. Uh, you get free Wi-Fi throughout every building on campus. We have a Carroll University specific network, which is nice because you never really have to worry about bad Wi-Fi or disconnecting, anything like that. As well as you get free cable being in dorm halls. Insider tip, they give out cables at the ITS Center, so never buy your own. You can always come onto campus and they'll give one to you for free, which is really awesome. Uh, like I said, you can pick your roommate ahead of time and you can kind of discuss how you want to set up the room. Or it can be you meet them on the first day and that's the first time you meet them. So there is no AC inside these dorms. However, there is heat. 
Most students get by just fine with a little box fan. They never have to worry about buying a uh, buying any AC products or anything like that. As long as you have the box fan, it's really only one or two months that you even need it. The rest of the time, you'll just have to worry about the heat, which isn't too bad. In each dorm hall, you're going to have laundry inside that dorm hall. And guess what? Laundry is free, included in the price of tuition. Also, you'll have all your mail and packages be delivered directly to that dorm hall. You'll never have to go and pick it up uh, at a off-campus location. They'll either be right at the front desk of your dorm hall or right over there in the campus center. Right behind me, kind of to your left, my right, is Wright Street. Wright Street is basically a street on campus that we bought all the houses on that street and we turned them into professors' offices as well as different academic facilities. So we have our academic advising center there, our health center there, as well as our public safety office. It's a really good street to know. Our Walter Young Center for Counseling and Disability Services is also on that street and it's just good to know that this is where all those services for you are located. The Campus Center, kind of a hub of campus activities. This is actually our last stop on the tour today. Uh, the Campus Center is three levels. The top level is an awesome ballroom and board center. We have a couple different events that always go on there, um, as well as just different things like that. Right here on the main floor, this is where we have the most important thing in the world, and that is the main dining room. Uh, Gert Olsberger, main dining room. Gert is campus's grandma. We all love her very family. Uh, we also have the Gert's Grab and Go, which is an awesome facility. Uh, it really is a grab and go. I used to come here every year, uh, sophomore year every day for my 8 a.m. that I always needed my orange juice and my blueberry muffin. So you just get stuff, you're able to bring it to the counter really quickly and head on out if you need a quick breakfast. And then the main dining room, like I said, most important place on campus. It's a buffet style, all you can eat. So really it's just come in and have as many plates as you possibly can. We have fresh food, we have fresh fruit. Usually we'll have a sandwich line, some kind of pizza out, as well as salads, soups, things like that. And they always have a hot food selection. They do an excellent job of switching it up. It's never the same thing too many days in a row. It's really one of my favorite things about Carroll is the dining opportunities. Ranked top 40 in the nation for the past however many years, couldn't even tell you. But they do an excellent job of switching things up. You're never eating the same thing two days in a row. So now we're here down in the pit. Not as bad as it sounds though. The pit really just stands for the Pioneer Indoor Terrace. This is a fast food type option for students. As we move through, I'll kind of address each one individually. Right here, Grill Nation. This is where you get your burgers, your french fries, your corn dog nuggets, all that good stuff. They have an excellent spicy chicken sandwich, rivals Popeyes, I've been told. Uh, Red Mango, this is where you've had too many spicy chicken sandwiches. You need something a little bit healthier. They have those acai bowls, which I learned is not acai bowls, but acai bowls. Froyo, an awesome protein smoothie. Just really however you want them made, you can get custom to made smoothies. As well as the newest addition to the dining opportunities on campus, we have Einstein Bagels and Caribou Coffee, both located in one place for that caffeine fix whenever you need it. Uh, and this is all used with your meal plan. You don't need to pay any extra to use these different spots. It's all included in your meal plan. Uh, you can use a meal for a meal exchange. So a meal exchange may be something like a coffee uh, and then a piece of fruit or a bagel, uh, a soda and a piece of fruit, as well as it could be burgers, fries and a drink. Now let's say you want two burgers, fries and a drink. You're not gonna use a whole second meal for that. So then you'll use Carroll University dining dollars. That's all included in the meal plan. You'll get X amount of meal swipes, X amount of dining dollars. And you'll be able to kind of balance those out however you want to. Well, that concludes our tour today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned a little bit uh, about Carol and who we are along the way. I hope you enjoyed some of the beautiful scenery and some of the awesome facilities that I got to share with you today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact any of us from the admission office, or if not, we'll look forward to seeing you on campus.